Um, I sent around the minutes from the July meeting. Thank you, Lisa. Any comments on that? I'm having trouble hearing you, Susan. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Is that better? Yes. 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 I have two microphones now because I got a new camera and it is not consistent on a given day which one will be better. So always tell me if you can't hear me because I don't know that. Um, what I had said was, thank you, Lisa, for the minutes from July. Any comments or feedback or a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to accept. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. We need to do a roll call. Fred? Yes. John? Yes. Bill? Yeah. Zach? Yep. Brenda? Yes. Keith? Yes. Adelia? Yes. Ashley? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Lisa? Yes. And I vote yes. Excellent. The minutes are approved. Because we haven't met since July, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about the cake lighting. I think many of you were there. It was a fabulous event. We estimate we had about 200 people there. Um, people were very excited to be there. Everything worked beautifully in terms of getting the cake topped and lit. So our thanks to the people who were involved in that, everyone that was cheering and really happy for that. Chesnick gave us enough ice cream for 200 people, which was exactly the right number. At the end, I was walking around trying to quote sell, um, you know, to get to give away. I think it was nine. That's how close we nailed it. We left no one disappointed. A couple people didn't get their first choice for flavor by the end, but everyone was really happy with the event. And it was a nice thing to bring the community together at a time where a lot of people are feeling, feeling isolated. The other comment that I wanted to make about it was that it had very broad appeal. You know, I, there were people in their 90s there and there were people, you know, babes in arms and everything in between, that this really was what I consider to be a perfect community event because everyone was having a good time. So thank you to Keith for all your hard work on that. Thank you for the vendor, the you know, local companies that made this all possible. Uh, we had great press from it. Ashley, thank you for getting the FCAT video up onto Facebook and all the places that it is so the people can can enjoy it. Any other comments on the cake lighting? Yes, and, and to the fire department for letting us use their facilities. Yes. And so thank you, John. Most definitely. Okay, any other comments on the cake? And every time I drive by there, I have to, I have to tell you, I was not part of team cake to begin with. I mean it just didn't excite me when I had driven by it in Hatfield. It's like, okay, people want it, fine. I wasn't opposed, but I didn't get it until I saw it lit up and, you know, in, in town. So it is awesome. And it's a nice reminder all the way until next June. Anybody who drives down Christian Lane has a reminder what's going on. Okay, let's move on to next June. Um, update on events. I wanted to talk specifically about Family Day because I know Keith, you had been approached by somebody or a couple of people at the cake lighting and I wanted to follow up and see if they were willing to work on this. I've got Frostine Bean willing to help out in any way and I feel she's be ample in it. However, I still need to try to find someone that'll be more of a you know, like a chairman of this, of, of that committee. Um, the one person I also was a suggestion was Ellen Skrowski and I have yet to follow up with her. So um, I definitely need to get that done. I will, I will follow up with her within a week or so um, because we definitely got to put 
some form of a committee together for that event because that's a big one. Yes. And Joyce, I see your comment. I'll come back to it in just a second. In terms of that event, we, it sounds like you're not like unrelated, but it's actually related. We, we got the approval for $10,000 from the state, but in order to cash in on it, we had to submit a budget of what we're going to do with the $10,000. And we allocated $8,000 of the 10000 to Family Day. Uh, and the other 2,000 to the concert series. So if somebody, you know, I love your line, Keith, of plan the best birthday party you can think of at our expense. They have a budget of $8,000, which will get you a lot of birthday stuff. Um, when we have a committee, I can share with them, we had to come up with specific items for the state budget. I think we put in the tethered balloons, we put in, a bouncy house of some sort we put in. I don't remember, I'd have to go back and look at it. But we, we had to line item what we would do. We tried putting in items that we're pretty confident we would want to be doing. So if we have people, we can write it, yeah, give them a check basically for $8,000. Um, Lisa, uh, Joyce, you had asked if we can share the. Um, calendar of events. Yeah. Can I just make a suggestion? Keith, yes. why don't you try Lola Stone too? She works oh, okay. with kids. She would, she'd be a good one working with kids. Okay. With ideas. I, I have no problems of twisting her arm, seeing if she'll do it. <laughs> I feel like we have to get that underway. Uh, and, and start planning because it is one of our biggest events and we'll take a fair amount of planning. In terms of sharing the calendar, I'm happy to share the calendar. What I have is a Google Doc uh, and not everyone has Gmail addresses. So I'm not sure the best way to do that. Yes. You can, I, I have a Gmail address. So if you send me a link to a Google Doc, that would be great. I'm inviting my family to come up and visit. And they're okay. asking about what events are on which days. Some can only come for one weekend and not the other. But I also want to look at what days are empty because it's about the time for Paul and me to start filling in evenings that don't have other things going with concerts. Yeah. So, so at the end of the call, I will probably send everybody a Google invite and a downloaded copy of it so that one way or another, hopefully everybody can see it. I'm not gonna take time during the meeting to figure out how to do all that. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Know, technology, but right after the meeting, I'll send that around. Anything else on family day? Okay, a question had come up regarding the chicken barbecue. Um, if there was a profit, does it go to the Firemen's Association? Does it go to the 250th? Does it go to you know, puppies and kittens? Um, what are people's thoughts? My, my feeling is if we're selling tickets to it, I'm, I'm picturing it along the lines of what the church does. We're selling tickets and the first money out of that is reimbursement for expenses. So if there is, do people agree with that, that this is a self-funding event? Any discussion, disagreement? Can you explain that again, Susan? I, you lost me. If you, if the chickens, the chickens themselves cost $500. I'm making yep. it completely. The first $500 in, and we're selling tickets again, making up numbers, $10 a ticket, because I can do the math this way. The first $500 that we bring in pays the chicken, pays for the chickens. Yep. If we sell more than, and I'm oversimplifying, if we sell more than 50 tickets and end up making a profit because let's say we sell 60 tickets, but we only needed 50 to pay for our expenses for the chickens, that incremental is profit. Right. So my first proposal 
is that this is what I call a self-funding event, meaning people buy tickets to go to the chicken barbecue like they do to the church. And that the, that's that pays for our expenses. So assuming enough people participate, it doesn't cost us money in the long run. We've put out money at the beginning and pay ourselves back from the tickets if we have to buy the chickens in advance or something. But the 250th is not paying for the expenses of the chicken barbecue, the community that buys tickets is. I guess I put that as a motion, the first motion of this discussion. Um, do people, what do people think of that versus if it's free and the money comes out of the 250th? Well, I think if you put out tickets, then you have an, um, account of how many are going to be there, how much you have to buy and everything else. If you just leave it open to the public, you you wouldn't get that. And uh, so I think uh, selling the tickets would be the better avenue. And uh, if you don't want to make much of a profit, just keep the tickets low, cost low. But at least it gives us a good, you know, Good cost. Yeah. And, and we saw that problem with the ice cream that we had no idea how many people were going to come when it was free. Right. And we we ended up being lucky and getting it right, but that wasn't necessarily going to be the case. So go ahead, Joyce. Um, I think um, I'm remembering back to um, uh, maybe Adelia and some others talking about the uh, Waitley 200th anniversary celebration and how um, the committee ended up giving back to the town some of the money that the town fronted because we needed money up front. So um, one of my thoughts is we try to make it self-funding, but if there's any extra money, let that go towards either other costs that we don't anticipate or being able to return some money to the town. Um, and that seems like a reasonable thing to do. Um, I mean, I, I love puppies and kittens, but um, <laughs> the, you know, the, the town stepped up and we asked, and if we end up having funds in the end, then that might be a good thing to do with them. I also and feel the like we should be able to budget fairly well how much it costs per person that will know how much is chicken, how much is corn, how much is potato chips. There's so no we, corn at the end of June, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but whatever we're putting on the plate, <coughs> we should be able, I would think we should be able to come pretty close to estimating how much a plate should cost, whether that's what we charge a ticket or do we charge more to bring more money in beyond that. Let's say it costs $10 to make a plate. Do we charge $10? Do we charge $15? John, you were gonna say something? I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm getting there. Now, <laughs> I asked this question of Keith originally that if the firefighters are going to go and put on a chicken barbecue and we have a budget for it, and I don't remember what the budget number was, say it's a thousand dollars now we go and order the chickens we do all the work we pay back the thousand dollars to the 250 committee and in the end we split any profits above that between the firefighters and the 250 committee so if we if we make two thousand dollars on top of the expenses the 250 committee gets a thousand Firefighters get a thousand. As what, well, what do you think of that? We you're not talking firefighters personally. You mean the fire the department gets that money to spend on things that they might need? Correct. The nonprofit association. Yeah. Okay. Comments, feedback. Hmm. Uh, you know we're gonna be potentially facing the same situation. For instance, um, the police association is stepped up and is looking at running the polka 
and that's probably another event that you might want to incorporate in collecting revenue from the polka or are we going to do that at, at you know at at no cost we, these are some other things that we have to figure out i i think we need to put a an admission price on anything because otherwise you're going to get crashers and way too many people if there's you know just showing up out of nowhere how are what are your thoughts then in regards to all of the different concerts and things of that nature that might well, that's different because we're not we're not giving anything away there but if people are expecting a chicken dinner or some refreshments at a polka dance that's going to be something we're going to have to provide concert you know there's no I mean, we they mm. do a concert for as many people as they want well, we i think no. it depends on where the concert might be if it's an outdoor concert that could be a free event but if it's in the town hall that might be a ticketed event event i would think you would it, you would advertise this up front and say this is what it is if the chicken barbecue is ten dollars a ticket that's what it is if the concert's free or the conference five dollars i it, that's i think you just have to advertise that and that's the way it's got to go yeah i, I, like I also the think idea. the concerts the concerts can be free but ticketed just say you know first come first serve for tickets that's true i like the uh, idea of a ticketed event but, but if we're, we're if gonna... we're providing something we have to know how much we, we don't want it just leaching mm. away to people who are not you know once chicken more. dinners are not inexpensive to produce and all of a sudden we're getting hordes of people and the people who we you know who should be getting the chicken dinners from town are not because so all right let me let me throw this out again um if the firefighters wanted to put on a chicken barbecue and obviously this committee can say what they want to say but if the firefighters feel they want to charge ten dollars a ticket because they fear that will cost cover the expenses and make a dollar then it ought to be up to them to determine what the cost is and we're just our curious but the curiosity and the question is if there's money left over in the end, where does it go? And I speak it, I would like to speak to that. Joyce, you asked about what happened 50 years ago. All money that was taken in 50 years ago went through our treasury, Jim LaSalle. The difference here was that a committee was made up of townspeople. It was not a fire site, fire site, fighters association. It was not a police association. Every committee worked for the good of the, the uh, event. And I have no recollection of anybody making any money. All money went through Jim LaSalle, the treasurer. And as Joyce said, money left over went back to the town. So you're putting out a very different scenario here where you're at an association doing the job. And perhaps I have no objection to their having a profit but going back to the past it was all through uh the money get went to the uh jim lasalle as treasurer and he paid all the bills and when the money was left it went back to the town so i don't remember any group making any profit from it mm -hmm. actually thank you, you to say something uh, i um, i was just going to say that um in terms of be, having paid events, ticketed events, um, from a marketing perspective, I think as long as we are upfront with where that money is, is going, like if it's going to, you know, a nonprofit or back to, you know, back into the, the committee or whatever, um, that's a feel good thing. And so I think that could work for some of these, these, these bigger events where things are expected, like food and drinks and that sort of thing. Okay. Other thoughts? Well, I was, you know, I, I kind of agree with John in supporting the fire department and the police department because they're actually town services and they always need more than what they get budgeted. <laughs> well, of course we all do. <laughs> but um, so I kind of in favor of that happening for them, but like uh, the 
police department may not be so much more. Maybe leave the tickets open for the for the dance, but charge for any beverages or anything like that that's sold at the dance. I don't remember being charged in the bicentennial for like for the dances and stuff. Were there tickets for the dances? No. No, I didn't think so. I think we're open to the public. And I think the channel might we would get local people. I mean, like South Gainfield, Sunderland, but I don't think they get many crashes type of thing. Um, at least I've never experienced it. Well, the only, the only difference now is social media is that the word will spread wider than it did then. Uh, I know if it's any indication, I know that for the cake lighting, there were, I'm going to say a few, there were some people from surrounding communities who had seen it. It wasn't purely Waitley residents. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I happen to be talking with somebody from Sunderland who then indicated some other people from her community. Um, I feel like there's a difference in two ways. One is when we are sponsoring the event, when we are putting together the event versus when another organization is, be it you know, the firefighters, be it the police association, if the PTO were to put together family day versus if we put put that event together. Um, I'm not, my mind isn't made up of what goes to the proceeds, but I'm not worried about things like the concert series, even if we were to sell tickets to an indoor event. Um, to me, because we are organizing that any proceeds come to us. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, other comments on the concept of for those events being organized by a separate you know, a separate organization, it's got to be a not-for-profit organization. We're not going to have you know some somebody to make money. It's got to be a local community organization. Mm -hmm. Should we put this to a vote? Is it premature to vote on this? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm just, you know, you know, thinking and listening about what John said and what Adelia said, and um, I guess it would be sort of uh, an acknowledgement of that, you know, things are different now, not this isn't necessarily pandemic related, but this committee isn't doing all the organizing like it maybe was done last time. Um, and uh, kind of the, the whole state of you know, re reality regarding people having time to volunteer or the ability to, to, to volunteer, we really have had to partner with other organizations in town. So I'm also not opposed to what John proposed for, uh, you know, especially since it would be going to a nonprofit organization. We're not partnering with, I don't know, BBC to do an event or something like that. Um, I think there are some events that are with private entities um like the ones with uh, uh with uh, tom's long dogs but i don't think those are <coughs> events where there's a profit to be made other than people walking into the hot dog stand and having dinner um which, which i don't think they should share proceeds on that they should just you know do do their their job um so i i'm kind of warming up in some ways to what john had said um uh, kind of looking at it through the lens of what Adelia uh, had had mentioned. I think also part of this from, from the beginning has been, this makes life a whole lot easier. We as the fire association will bring you 20 guys to make your chicken for you. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. If the association is not involved, you're looking at the nine faces on the screen, we're gonna cook the chicken? You got time for that? Right, exactly. Fire yeah. association yeah, will deliver you a chicken barbecue but right. I don't see, I don't see a bit of problem in letting them share in if if yeah. there is a profit letting them share in the profit because they're delivering you the product. Yeah, I, that, that's I guess that's a uh, it's completely consistent with what I'm thinking, Bill. Right, and it, it's it's like a joint venture because the the firefighters association is not bringing the people there. It's it's the two fiftieth, and yet the two fiftieth aren't 
making cooking the chicken. So it's a it it's it's a necessity of both entities to make it work out. And it's just like I I'll ask my mother, did how did you split the profits with Tom's with the the historical fair this past weekend? Did the did Tom's hot dog make a donation or how did that work for, for the sales of that? Yes. Tom's um, Gary gave us a donation back. So so again, it was like he 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 came there and was making a profit, but he was doing it because the historical society brought the people there. So it's 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 two parties yeah. involved, just like this. And how was it done for the church? The chicken barbecue for the church. For the for when the firefighters cook the chicken. Yeah, yeah, Labor Day. The, the firefighters have donate at that point in time. We have just donated our our time to do that to the church, and we get we all get meal free meals back out of it. So we we get something from it. And we gave a donation to your yes, church. and and that's true. I forgot that. And a donation comes back to the association from the church for our time. Okay. So there was precedent, absolutely precedent. What I like about this concept is it's an incentive for local organizations to be involved in the celebration, to sponsor events, because um, yeah, otherwise it's us and we all can't do that much. Shall we put this to a vote? Do we want to make them? Uh, I mean, I'll pr I'll propose a motion. If pe somebody wants to second it, that's fine. And the motion will be that from the chicken barbecue, any of the proceeds, fifty percent go to the Associ firefighters association and fifty percent to the two fiftieth committee. And any second, profit right? after expenses to reimburse. Correct. Second. Do we want to broaden this proposal uh, to include? the uh, police association and polka dance. It, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll start over then, I guess, because I'll, I'll make a motion that the, that any event that's put on by the firefighters association and or the police officers association after expenses, all proceeds will be split 50% to the respectable association and the other 50% to the 250th Friday. Um, uh, second. Sorry, John. John, what did you say? John, did you say something? Oh, I seconded it. Oh, I, tried okay. to. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't hear you. Joyce, you were trying to say something? I was going to second it because I didn't hear John's second. Oh, but okay. I, I defer to John's second. <laughs> Can I, I don't know, make a note in the minutes that if other organizations come to us, we will then consider it on a case by case basis and vote. That seems reasonable. Because I don't think we want to make a blanket thing because we may not agree with some potential proposal, but I think these two we've discussed. Is that okay as an amendment yeah. to the motion? Is that the proper term? Well, I think uh, his motion was just the police association and or the firefighters association. Right, um, but I think that as, as a note to the minutes that, you know, any organ the, other yeah. organizations can yeah. look to this as guidance. I don't want to set the expectation that they're going to get get it. I think for other organizations, we will review proposals. Right. Yeah. I yeah. don't want them to think that. I think we don't have to, have to vote on whether that goes in the minutes because we talked no, about it. No, we don't it. have to vote it goes, in the, goes in the minutes and it doesn't have to be in the motion either. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The motion is only about those two events organizations. So we have, if I'm saying this right, we have a motion specific to firefighters and police for chicken barbecue and the polka dance that ticket sales, first offset costs, 
any profit is divided 50-50 between said organization and the 250th budget. I'm saying it right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Any discussion before we vote? Fred? Yes. Me? Yes. John? Yes. Bill? Yeah. Zach? Yes. Keith? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Adelia? Yes. Ashley? Yes. Joyce? Hi. Lisa? Yes. Passes unanimously. Excellent. Are there I any like of, <laughs> any other events we want to talk about? At this, anybody have any reports on any events that they're coordinating? Because keep in mind, you all are coordinating specific events, and mm -hmm. that will be in the list. The reminder will be in that list that I send around after the meeting. So, does anybody have anything to say about any events? I, I just have. Go ahead, oh. Brenda. I don't believe I'm assigned to any event as far as coordinating. Um, I might work on the family day, if right. uh, with with uh, Lola and. I get a committee. <laughs> we could use you there. Thank you. Somebody else was trying to say something at the same time? I did, Lisa. Yeah. I just have a quick question. How do I go about um, booking the town hall for the art and crafts event? What's oh, the I process? Think, yeah, I think you um, get in contact with uh, Brian at the okay. town office as town administrator at waitley.org. Um, and I think he's probably got a, a checklist of things and, um, and, and so on. So I think uh, uh, he's the guy to go, go to first. Excellent. Thank you. Do we get charged for that? I think as a town organization, you don't. No. Okay. Uh, because I think there's, there, there, yeah, there's different times when you are charged if you're not a town organization or a, or a member or a citizen of the town. Um, but I believe it would be something you would not get charged. Okay, thank you, Joyce. Mm. Along, the, along the same lines, I do want to note that I was in touch actually a while ago with Jonathan and have reserved her lahi for family day. For family day? Yeah. So we have on the calendar for her lahi for that. I have a question for Lisa and the larger committee. When you talk about your craft fair, are you going to have people coming and selling things, displaying? No, them? no, just for display. That's what I want to know. Okay. Yeah, and it's not, yeah, no, I don't want to get into the whole selling thing because then that makes it complicated. Okay. And I am thinking of opening it up to the neighboring towns if we don't, because right now we only have like 13, 14 people that are signing up. So I may open it up to the other towns to, to participate, but I have to figure that out. And let, let us know because Fred and I have some con have a contact in Hatfield. Who... Yeah, I'm thinking because Hatfield was so generous with us that we probably should just be a good neighbor and open it up to the other towns. But then I worry that we don't have enough space if we do get five towns all. We have a lot of artists in the area, so I'm a little nervous about mm. that. Yeah, but if they can't sell things there, then they might be less enthusiastic. Well, that's true. I mean, they can sell on their own, but I just think that mm. it should be a display type of thing, a goodwill thing, not about a money making. Mm. Yeah. Lisa, I haven't posted anything about like a call for artists. I um, know. Do you want me to do that? <laughs> uh, how about we be in touch? Because actually I have something for you. I wanted to, I just haven't, I've been so swamped with my work. I'm so sorry. But um, I went, actually, I went to the Big E two weeks ago and the old Waitley School is there. And I took a bunch of photos mm -hmm. to send you that you could put up on social media. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. So I have, we'll have to get in touch so I can get you all those images. But I was very excited. I'm like, oh, I have to take all these pictures for Ashley. <laughs> the, historical, <laughs> post. the Historical Society has a facsimile of that whole building. Yeah. Do, 
That's awesome. Well, I figured you probably would have all the history, but I just thought I was there. It was a perfect opportunity. And they had some person in there kind of doing a demo type of thing. So I just thought it was a it was a fun opportunity, seems how it was our 250th. And while we're talking about the photos, Ashley and Lisa, we had talked about creating some sort of repository. I I'm gonna say, you know. On the, in the cloud, I don't I don't know what it is, but if the two of you can coordinate the best way to do that, as people have photographs of events, we can all put them there, and then on the back end, we're not going to be hunting down pictures. Right, I'm already thinking about that. Um, I'm a little worried because any of the free stuff we have is very limited on file storage. So actually, when I reach out to Brian about the um, town hall, I will ask him if the town has some kind of server that we could access to be and plus it would make sense for the town to host and keep all these files anyway. Yeah. So I'm going to just reach out and find out because if you get a Google Drive, all that we're limited on file storage and all these photos are so if we're going to use them for the booklet, the photos are going to be large in file size so it's going to fill up really quickly so um, it's, it's on my list when I so I will send an email out to Brian this week and try to get all that stuff straightened out and I'll let you know. Excellent. Thank you very okay. much. Um, any other discussion on this topic. Okay, next thing on our agenda, the Historical Commission approached media as part of the 250th celebration, the Historical Commission is putting together what they're calling hidden histories, a map of Waitley with sites located where something interesting happened. Uh, and then it, it's an interactive map and it then gives you information on that spot. For example, and I don't honestly don't know if this one made the cut for them or not. Waitley was the site of the first gin distillery in the state of Massachusetts, uh, which eventually blew up. Um, <laughs> but if, if that is a site on the map and then you click on it, it'll give you information. They have asked if they can have a budget of $900 because they are working with uh, somebody who will set up that the, the map and the technology behind this and also you know, pay for some of the sources that they need for research into these events. So I guess I move to give 900 or to give the historical commission uh, up to $900 to offset the costs for their project for the 250. I'll second that. Any discussion? I think okay. it sounds like a bargain. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a bargain for, for all those people to do all that work and then to you know pay less than $1,000 to kind of have some nice permanent thing that can be it can probably be posted all over the place it sounds like yeah. a bargain they wanted to create something that will be lasting yeah you know, it goes beyond the celebration okay. how much money do we have right now we've got in the bank about sixty five hundred dollars but we also have sixty thousand committed from the town the 10,000 committed from the state, but that's allocated for family day and part of the concert series. I guess the real question is, is there $900 to give them? Yes. Yes, okay. absolutely. That, there you go. <laughs> Any other? Yeah, Brenda? Can I, Dee Dee, can I ask you who's doing, who's in charge of that? Charge of uh, the, the hitting histories. It's the historical commission. So who Donna's the that's chair? Not, that's not, not me. The chair. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the I'm commission, sorry. not the society. Yeah. So it's the historical commission chaired by Donna Wiley. Well, I just knew uh, there's a spot up on the Glen that was uh, originally a uh, Native American uh, village. And there's a story with the Scots that go along with that, that they were freezing in the summer, I mean, freezing in the winter and the Scots provided blankets for them and the 
uh, during the Indian Wars, the Scots were never attacked. I just thought that was an interesting. That is fascinating. Mm -hmm. You may want to contact Donna Wiley with that, or Judy Marklin, if you know Judy. If, I don't know if you don't know Donna. J Judy is working with her on this. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Let's go the other way around. Lisa? I agree. <coughs> Joyce? Aye. Ashley? Yes. Adelia? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Keith? Yes. Zach? Yep. Bill? Yep. John? Yep. Fred? Aye. Yes. Good. Okay, next topic, the pottery prototypes. Uh, the what? The pottery prototypes. So when we started the, the pottery project, we had the potter create a number of different in, you know, one off pots that we would then decide which ones we would sell. There are I, uh, Keith or Adelia, do you have any idea about how many prototypes we have at this point? I think seven or eight. I, think, uh, I don't know. I thought there was six, maybe eight. I'm not sure. Somewhere so, in that range. In that, in that ballpark, we have somewhere between six and eight of these prototypes left. That the Historical Society approached me to ask what our plans are to do with them. You know, they would like to have them to add to the display. They have similar pieces from the 200th um, prototypes of pots that were done there. So do we want to donate all of them to the society, donate none of them to society, donate some of them to the society and use the others as raffle prizes or some other fundraising venture or some I other option that I haven't thought of. I make a motion they all go to the Historical Society. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? I think mm -hmm. the Historical Society was uh, willing or expecting to pay something for them. I don't think but you can give them to them. I, what the point is that we have them on a, a, what we call the Simon Smikes Hutch, and you can see what they looked like 50 years ago, and they are really a beautiful addition on the second shelf. So when you go through there, you see the, the difference in the, in the pottery industry. Currently, they are being displayed on a... Yeah. Yeah. We brought, them, we brought them back from the library and they are in the museum now. Yeah. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. I can't really think of it. I mean, it, it, I sort of feel like it, to, like if, if somebody were chomping at the bit to run a raffle and they needed a prize for it, that sounds like the only reason why we wouldn't give all of them to the historical society. But I'm not hearing that there's anybody chomping at the bit to run a raffle to raise no. money for us uh, at this point. So- No, yeah. but I, I don't know that we, do we need to make the decision now? Can we just hold off on that in case we have some significant use for them come next, you know, by next spring, um, you know, rather than committing them. The, the expectation is yeah. that's where they will end up. Yeah. Can, can we think about it and, and decide at the next meeting? I sort of feel like it's kind of a, um, like I, I, for, I feel like I want more than three minutes to think about it. Yeah. I make a motion to table the idea. Okay. I withdraw my motion and make a new motion to table the idea. <laughs> Adelia, are you going to be at the meeting tomorrow morning? Yes. While you're there, can you count how many there are? Sure. So that we, we have a better idea of what we're talking about. 
Thank you. Okay, do I have a second of Brenda's motion to table Brenda's motion? Yeah, I, I seconded it. Is that how this works? You have to realize I never read one of the Roberts Rules of Order. Oh, you're doing fine. All in favor? Oh, no, I got to do this a little. Okay, in favor of tabling this issue to think about it and do a little research on it. Brad? Table the motion. Aye. John? Yes. Bill? Yeah. Zach? Yep. Brenda? Yes. Keith? Yes. Adelia? Yes. Ashley? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Joyce? Aye. Me, yes. Okay, so it is tabled to be revisited, whether it's next month or at some future meeting. Um, okay, the historical milk bottles. Do you, do you want to talk about that one? Yeah, I just wanted to see if we want to put it back up on social media or how well, I can't remember how we were obtaining people that were interested in it, but we had last left it that come the fall time, we'd get it back out when darkness is earlier. So oh, wait, 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 we're, we're, we're not up to the logo lights yet. We're, oh, sorry, we are, we are, I skipped one. Okay, <laughs> the logo lights, I, I was talking about the milk bottles, the logo lights, yeah. The, lo sorry. the logo lights, I, I'm just looking to get them back, get them back out to, to individual homes. Um, the Belders had taken them, the Gripkos, they were at my mother's, Adelia's house, and also at um, Limero, I think I'm pronouncing that right, pr properly, Limero on Swamp Road. So there may have been one other person that had, had shown interest. I don't remember that at the moment, but I'd like to get them back out. I think now's a perfect time. I can post something and... Um solicit some some responses excellent do you have okay keith do you see joyce's note yep i can i already got the first place to go now <laughs> um <laughs> ashley do you have a picture of them to put up yes i do i think from when they were at adelia's okay good 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 yeah because it's starting i noticed it's going down the stairs before it's 6 30 and it was you know, getting dark already it's we're getting to the point where we could put them out because it will be dark enough for people to see them one place that might be nice even to display them for a little bit might be um by the cake um that might get some attention or at least some interest as well mm -hmm. okay I guess I have to turn to John Would if the firefighters would let us do that because I think it's your property. Sure. Sure. Okay. That's a great that's a great idea. Anything else on the lights? Okay, we are now on to the milk bottle. The milk bottles, the little milk bottles. Adelia. The, the milk bottles that the historical society have been selling for many years are sitting uh, many of the boxes in Lois Bean's garage. And um, we are interested in, the Historical Society is interested in having them out and about so that we don't have them sitting in the, somebody's garage forever. So I think our uh, 250th group considered having them maybe etched with our logo and sold as a souvenir for the, 250th next spring. So we need to get them up <laughs> of lowest. Everybody look at Joyce. Look at Joyce while I want one. What? It says, I want one. <laughs> I'll buy one. No, I just have the one I bought already from the Historical <laughs> Society. But you, you can so bring it back. See what we're talking about. Joyce, get back and have it etched with the 250th if we, if we go that route. So the Historical Society said, we really are not interested in making a big profit on this, but we probably would want a dollar a jug or a bottle. So I would like to have um, our group move a, some sort of a motion so that we can from lowest and then uh, have a place where they could be stored until our 
um, whoever. We should. We really do need a souvenir committee, or some committee that would take charge mm. of, of that. Yeah. What, we, we what if? What if we made them a party favor for the chicken barbecue? Add a dollar to the price of whatever we were going to charge, and give anyone who comes How and pays a bottle. How There's not enough have? for that. Yeah. There's yeah. Not, okay, I didn't know how many there were, but. Do we have a sense? How many? I did get the number from uh, one of Lois's kids. And of course, you know how I write things on an envelope. I know what it said. So what uh, Neil, Abram, and I are going to go to Lois's and get them. So I maybe at the next meeting, we would definitely have a number. But right now, okay. total guess. I, I don't want to say. Okay. Okay, but, we, I, but I think that if we put them, associate them with some event and add the cost and it, that, you know, cause they, they've been out and, you know, like at this last week's event, they were out to be sold and you still probably sold a couple, but I think you're looking to move a bigger number. I mean, I don't know that we can plan what we want to do with them until we have an idea how many there are. Um, we also should get a cost from, was it Danny, the guy who yes. defined what it would cost yeah. to get the match? Before you give it out to an event, I would suggest that it would go out to volunteers who work the events instead of selling it or giving it to a somebody who bought a ticket to an event. That's a great a, idea. A thank you to a uh, a worker. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. But let's find out how many we're talking about. Yeah, let's about. find out what it's going to cost. But I just um, want to make sure that the 250th committee, us tonight, are in agreement that we are going to take them off the hands of the Historical Society. You want to make a motion to that effect? I so will. I will move that. Do I have a second? Second. So what, what exactly is the motion, Medea, that we, the 250, that we, we uh, purchases we, them from the society? Yeah, I would move that the 250th committee uh, take the <coughs> off the hands of the histor historical society. When you say take them off the hands, it sounds like no, there's bring, no money bring them to our, they become our property. I thought you were looking for a dollar per per. per oh, I, well, I was. Yeah, I said that they would. Okay, so that, right. that yeah. put that okay. in your motion. That I, I would vote on that without knowing how many there are, so we know the budget impact. I was going to say the same thing. We can't really commit okay. to buying them until we know how many there are. I mean, yeah, I'm fine with the idea, but I think we have to have a budget line on it. I guess I would like to make sure that if I go and get them from Lois's garage that the 250th is going to take them and they're not going to the garage. <laughs> I, I, I would say that the sense of the committee is that we will be happy to do so once we have an idea of exactly what's involved. Yeah. We just I, I think you, you can act on the assumption that something will be done with them, but I don't want to commit. I don't think we should commit money or anything until we know whether there are 50 or 5,000. Can do. So I think we have to table this until you've got a number. We can revisit it at the next meeting. And we should at that point be able to vote on because we know what we're right. voting. Does everybody agree? I don't know if I have to think of vote on that one. Okay. Next on the agenda is gift to town. Allison's not here. Um, so I'm not going to do a lot on that, but I do want to mention that I met with the um, library board and they approved what we had talked about in terms of for the bench, the engraving on one side, the uh, one and only Waitley, and on the other side um, from, wait, some, some, I forget the word I have it written down, from the residents of Waitley 2021. So they, they loved that idea. Um, the uh, first monument company that I was talking with has been ghosting me. I spoke with Jim Ross, he recommended Notre Dame and South Hadley, who he's been working with along with Keith, I believe, on the veterans, because their bench is involved with the veterans park. So 
I will reach out to them and um, hopefully get that going. So I just wanted to give you all an update that they are on board with what we're doing. Fundraising. We have bombed out getting some so far, getting somebody to help with fundraising. I'll, 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 I'll take it. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Fundraising right now is a disaster. Sorry. Uh, I, we have updated the partnership letter package. I sent it out to my committee and asked for responses back and heard nothing from any of them. Uh, Keith gave me a name of someone to contact who might be interested in fundraising. I've left her several messages and not heard back from her. Uh, having now been elected to the select board, I do not feel I'm in a position that I should solicit any business for money, but, uh, or, or contributions. It, you know, sort of comes across as extortion. So we need, we, we've got, I'm sure we've got businesses in town that are eager to give us money or services or whatever, but need to be asked. And we just need people to ask. We've got places, and I'm not even talking Yankee Candle, which is a different story, but you know, places like l and Fence and Waitley Inn and you know, significant businesses in town that just need to be asked. And so, but that's where we are right now. We've got a committee that is not operating, unfortunately. What I would like to do is put together, if Fred and I were to put together a list of some of the larger businesses in town and circulate it among this group, because you all have friends and contacts and are probably more effective approaching somebody you know. We, we would provide, we have the package updated, the, you know, the printed material or the, you know, the printed material of what the ask is. But if people would approach businesses that they know as a first, first hit to do something to get this going. And if you know anybody else who you could ask to ask someone, you, you know your neighbor is friends with the owner of a place. Because we've got to get this going and we're just hitting a wall. And, and we last year we sent out a letter that got essentially no response. This this is a door-to-door -door personal ask will we'll be the most effective by far. Um, you know, rather than just a, you know, a form letter or email. And someone's got to go knocking on doors. So I was going to ask the Waitley Inn to sponsor the food for the art and craft show. So if you'd like to send me the packet or whatever, I would reach out to the Waitley Inn. Okay, hold that. on, hold on. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute because I don't know that while the individual should be approaching a company, I don't know that the individual should specify the event that the company should sponsor. For example, yes, okay. you're thinking of approaching the Waitley Inn for that. And meanwhile, somebody else was thinking of approaching the Waitley Inn for, you know, to sponsor, I'm gonna say the fireworks. I, I, I'm throwing things out yeah. there. That it's, we need to have a very coordinated effort of here are the things that need to be sponsored. What would you like to sponsor? Because we cannot be competing with one another right. um, to go to a place. We also need to, if we circulate this list of businesses, sign up for the business you want to approach so that no one else approaches them. So again, we're, we're looking like we have our acting gear. Right. And that's why I was just mentioning it. If, if you said you and Fred were going to put together a list of all the businesses, so I'm just saying that I would be happy to be that person to reach out to them. And it could be Great. for for whatever. It could be for the whole event. And then would you like to help with this? You know? yeah. The, yeah. The, the other thing involved with, with fundraising, especially with a Waitley and Susan, I think you and Keith visited them three years ago now. I, I did. Yeah, you did. I, 
And they had expressed interest at that time in being a player in this. Yeah, they didn't specify what they would want to sponsor, but they said that they would like to see what the options were because they were budgeting to sponsor something, which is why I want them to drive it because if they're willing to give us $5,000 and we go to them for something that costs $500, we're leaving money on the table. That that was going to be my point, is that I don't want to leave money on the table by under asking, you know, asking for a small event from someone who could sponsor a big event. Right. That's fine. That's fine. So Fred and I, I mean, if people agree with this approach, Fred and I will put together this list over the next, I, I, over our next meeting and circulate it and ask people to write, you know, to put their name in. And I wish everybody had access to google because you can susan you can give people access who have the link to edit okay um there's a way to do that in google drive if people can do it within google drive this way if they first come first serve of what business you want and i want to give i want to go to wait Leanne and i go into the sheet and i see nope lisa's already signed up for that one i will sign up for something different and just let me say to the committee, I am really sorry for this getting dumped back into the committee's lap, but COVID really fouled up the fundraising plan. And now it's just we've hit a brick wall. So we, we've got to find another way and quickly. Yeah. So we, we were going to. Ask people put put your name down for put your name down for more than one if there's more than one that you can approach. There's a lot of more businesses than there are us, and we need to approach as many of them as we can. Can I ask another question, Susan? So in this packet that have the list of events, so we can hand them that and say this is these are all the events that we're planning on having, and then this way we're not, you we, know, we can send a, we've got a PDF of the. The package we can send that around to this committee yeah okay that and if there's something that you catch that we missed let us know and we can update okay like it didn't occur to us to put food for the arts fair on there that's not to say we it can't be added we just put on what we thought i want to add that i have a there's a sponsorship page on the waitley 250 website so Fred, if you send that PDF around, I will update it and post that there. Just so there's a place if people want to think about it, they can always go and see that information on the website right. as well. Yeah, and that that link I think is on, I think we put that on the uh, on the sheet already. Take a look at it though, because you you know if we want to tweak it in any way, we need to do that quickly. Give us feedback soon. Okay. Okay. I don't think there's anything to vote on on that one. Any other business that the committee has? Yes, I was approached by Katie Ross, and this would go maybe to Joyce Palmer Fortune. She thinks that um, we should have a concert. Library friends often get uh, who's the guy Keith P T J and the people. Yep. yep. And. Um, she would be like she would like to have her group considered as maybe one of the sponsors of a concert. So should I tell her to get in touch with Joyce? I didn't know what to do. Her. Hey, that's fine. I think I might even have Katie's email. Um, okay, so I'm going to pass it on to you. Yeah. Because she she said that a lot of people like that concert and come to the library, and she wanted to have that thought yeah. about with the concert. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I've got I've got Katie at jdrbuilders.com. That's probably Katie Ross. So yes, um, this is perfect timing for that too. And she wants Katie the friends to be the been, sponsor. She, I ran into her not too long ago, and she asked to be added to the list of these meetings. So her email is also on the distribution list for tonight's call. If you want to verify it against that. Okay. Probably the last name on the list because she was one of the last ones added. 
Okay. Um, any other business? So before our, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, November 8th. Any conflict with that? I always, when I say that, I always look to John to make sure that the firemen aren't meeting that night. That tends to be our biggest conflict. Yeah. Okay, good. I, I don't have my calendar from me. I assume that that's probably Veterans Day. It's Veterans not this Day year. Is the 11th. Okay. Um, so it is the day after daylight savings. Okay. That will be important to note. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll all be you know, showing up at different times. So I just to sum up because I want to make sure I know my to do list. I am sending around the calendar, and I'm going to attempt to do this as a link that everybody can get to on Google Drive. Um. Fred and I will put together a list of businesses and send that around for people to sign up the businesses that they will approach. Um, and we will send around the PDF that we have for the fundraising package, soliciting feedback um, if you think of things that should be added to it. Am I missing anything? Adelia is going to check on how many bottles there are and report back on that. Can, can I add one thing on the, the businesses in town? Yes, certainly ask businesses in town. If you know of owners of businesses in Hatfield or Deerfield or Sunderland, et cetera, they have all given to other town events as well. But for now, we'll start in town, but you know, if you know someone in the adjoining towns, by all means, they can be asked as well. And when I send around the list of businesses, if there is a business you know that is not on the list, please add them if you're willing to con yeah, if they're willing to contact them. Don't be limited by the list that we come up with. Yeah, the, list, the list was, simp was generally compiled from real estate records of what businesses own property, but there are lots of businesses operating out of houses that aren't yeah. on that list. Think broader than the list, please. Um, Adelia, you were gonna say something? I have to also uh, get the number of, you were asking for what I, my job was. I have, to, I have to get two numbers, the number of bottles and the number of uh, prototypes. Yes, right. yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, this is why I go through the to-dos at the end because I don't remember them all. Anything else? Do I have a motion? To Move adjourn? to adjourn. Second. Second. We do roll call on this one too. Joyce says yes. Yeah. So Joyce, you have to start. Aye. Lisa? Yes. Ashley? Yes. Adelia? Yes. Keith? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Zach? No. Zach? Yep, yep. Okay, Bill? Yep. John? Yep. Fred? Yep. Me? Yes, and you know how my goal is always to keep these as close to an hour as possible. Imagine how much time we will save when we no longer have to do it as a roll call. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>